Hello. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the functions of the Tactic Race Master. The Race Master Compass, as you will see here, has four key functions. It's a compass, it's a wind shift indicator, it gives you start line bias, and it's also a race timer. I'm going to take you through each of these functions and show you how to use it and set it up for tactical advantage on the race course. The top line of the race master display is always the compass, showing the compass heading of the boat. It is the bottom line where you will see additional functions displayed, or the bottom window pane as we call it. To change the functions on the bottom window pane, you press the first button, which is the button on the left. As you can see, we're in wind shift mode. You can change it to start line bias, or you could change it to race timer. What I'm going to do next is show you how to set up the wind shift function. So first, using button 1, I put the compass into wind mode. Once you're in the course area and you've got your boat set up, you can start doing a practice first beat and we recommend you start on port tack. Make sure you have a clear lane as it's going to be important to steer the boat really nice and steady and not be affected by other boats while you first of all go on port and then tack onto starboard. To start this, press and hold button 2 and once the boat is ready and you see the rotating lines what the compass is actually doing is recording the angle at which you're sailing for the next two minutes. It will actually take an average of that course and after two minutes the compass will say tack now. So we go through a nice smooth fast tack and once again, after the tack is completed, the rotating lines now begin on starboard tack. The compass is now doing the same thing as before. It's recording your average heading for the next two minutes. After doing the two tacks, it gives you an indication of the tack angle you've sailed through. And as you've just seen there, it says 94 degrees which is not bad for a light wind day like today. If it goes over 100, uh, then you probably haven't done a very good uh, run and you really should think about doing it again. With some practice, you'll soon get a feel for the tack angle that is right for your boat for the different conditions that you sail in. But generally speaking, the windier it gets, the tighter the tack angle and the lower the number. Having recorded the tack angle, the compass is now in wind shift mode. And what it's actually doing is taking an average of the two headings and it's worked out what the mean wind is. And now it can indicate how the boat is going upwind against that mean wind. So as you can see, at the moment we are on a steady course. Minus 3 means we're being uh, headed 3 degrees, plus 4 means we've been lifted 4 degrees. And clearly, if you get a big header and a big minus number, then that's when you should be considering whether it's worth tacking for tactical advantage. At the same time as getting the minus and positive numbers, the race master can also show the same information in a bar chart. The bar chart goes up and down on the center line. As you can see, the numbers go getting bigger here, and the bar chart goes down. And likewise, when the numbers reduce, the bar chart goes up, and as you can see here, starts to go up and goes positive. So quite simply, that's the race master wind function. The thing that we're going to do next is show you how you might be able to alter the mean wind and tack angle that is stored in the compass as a result of the pre-start maneuver that we went through a while ago. This is very easy. If you press and hold the button 2 again, until you get the rotating lines, and then you press it one more time, but don't hold it, just press it once. It'll tell you the, what the mean wind is, and you can adjust that. So let me give an example. So say the race committee boat has posted up a mean wind of 200 degrees, even though you've got 168 on the boat as the wind is shifting around. If we go through the process again, press and hold button 2, you get the rotating lines, press it once more, and then I can actually adjust very easily using the left and right buttons to the mean wind direction. These are buttons 3 and 4. Let's say for the sake of argument the race team has chosen 180. 
I can then press the button again, button 2, and attack angle is stored as 94, which is what I did earlier. And you can see that displayed at the moment. It actually disappears for a few seconds and then takes you into the normal racing mode. But if I wanted to change the tack angle of the boat, I will go through the routine again. Press it one more time. There's the new wind I've just stored. Press it again. There's the tack angle. The wind's gone up, so I now want to reduce, say, our tack angle to 88. I'll leave it for a few seconds, and it's in race mode. The race master is also great at giving you tactical advantage downwind. If the number is high and the bar chart is high, you're more than likely on the wrong jibe. If the number is low, then you're more than likely on the correct jibe because you're heading directly downwind and making a good course to the leeward mark. During a lot of races, it's not unusual for there to be a major wind shift. In this circumstance, you may wish to reduce the settings on your compass, so you take into consideration the wind shift. This is done very easily. You use basically the two right-hand buttons, the left-facing arrow and the right-facing arrow, to make the adjustment. If you're on starboard tack, you press the right arrow. If you're on port tack, you press the left arrow. So we're on starboard tack, currently showing minus 20, minus 19. So I press the right button to make the adjustment. It tells me that I've adjusted the mean wind. We're on 180. I've now adjusted to 160. And now when you look at the uh, wind reading, it's back to plus one or something similar to that as I've now adjusted the mean wind successfully and I'm getting some sensible readings for my wind shifts. The race master is also a great tool when it comes to timing the start of the race. So the start timer, you press the button once and you change from wind shift mode. We don't want start line mode, but we want timer mode. As you can see, the race master is already set up for five minutes. To change that is very easy. You just press and hold button two, the second button in. And then you use the left and right arrow buttons three and four to move up to five or seven, or if you still use a 10 minutes, you can change it to 10. But where I sail, we use the five minute. And once I have the number right, I press button two once more. And that is set and ready to go. So as soon as we hear the gun, even if we're a touch late, we press and start using button two. And now it's counting down from the five minutes before the start. It doesn't matter if you don't press the button accurately on the five minutes because you can reset the timer when we get closer to the four minute gun. Because what it does is actually synchronizes to the nearest minute. Having set up the compass with the two main inputs, that is mean wind direction and tack angle, we can now use these to understand start line bias. So to do this, we first change the mode from wind shift to line mode by pressing button one. As you can see, it currently shows dashes. And as we sail along the line, you press button two, and it immediately tells you what the start line bias is and the favored end. The arrow points to the favoured end, so in this situation we have 6 degrees of bias to the committee boat end. The number then changes to a perpendicular, so having set the angle of the start line, it then adds or subtracts 90 degrees depending whether we're on port or starboard, and therefore tells us what the perpendicular, or 90 degrees, to the start line is. So in this case, 174. So now, if we go head to wind, we can check the start line angle against the perpendicular by getting 174 on both displays.
And then if the wind is blowing from the right-hand side of the boat, it's on starboard bias, or the port-hand side of the boat, it's a port bias line. In this case, you can see we've got a reasonably square line.